Hello everyone, this is Mikey Garcia. Yo, it's your boy, the odd guy himself, Malik King Scott. Hi, I'm Charlie Edwards. This is Fast Eddie Chambers, and you're listening to the Box Hard Podcast with my main man, Joey Kosmo. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the third episode of the Box Hard Podcast. I'm your host, Joey Kosman. I'm joined today by Ayaz. Ayaz, how are you doing? I'm good, Joey. How are you? Very good, very good. Um, today's a very exciting show, guys. We've got two guests on the show. Um, we've got Big Oval McKenzie. He talks everything about his experience and his fight last Friday with Victor Emilio Ramirez, uh, the IBF world champion at Cruiserweight. We also speak to Gary Spike O'Sullivan, who's fighting on Saturday night. He tells us everything about his fight, Chris Eubank Jr., and so on. Okay, this show is called Preview and Review, where we preview the forthcoming weekend of fights and we review the previous weekend of fights. So um, last Friday, we're not really going to go into too much detail here, but there was a fight between uh, IBF cruiserweight champion uh, Victor Ramirez and he defended or tried to defend his title against Oval McKenzie. They fought to a split draw after 12 rounds. I personally thought Oval nicked it. We're not going to go too much in detail here because Oval's coming on the show. and He's going to tell us everything about his experiences. Okay, moving on to Saturday night. Tommy Langford moved to 14-0 and in his fight for the WBO Intercontinental Middleweight title. Uh, he beat Christian Fabian Rios by unanimous decision after 10 rounds. Moving down that card, Josh Lever moves to 8-0 and with a fourth round knockout over Michael Mooney. Paul Butler was also on that card as he moved to 19 and 1 with a first round stoppage by a body shot over Hector Rolando Guzman. Also Andrew Robinson who we saw in a clash with Frank Bullioni I think uh, earlier this year he moved to 16 and 1 with a win over journeyman Davidas Sajajuka. Not going to try to pretend for a minute that I've got that pronunciation right. Also, moving over to the StubHub Center, Carson, California, Victor Postel. Uh, obviously, he fought Lucas Martin Matisse. A lot of people underestimated Postel. Postel uh, with a 27-0 record going into that fight. A lot of people thought Matisse would probably stop him. And, um, well, it happened the other way around. In the 10th round, Victor Postel stopped Matisse, or you could say Matisse stopped himself. Um, Matisse, I thought, was probably cruising to a point win. A lot of good punches, probably the best punches landed in the fight were from Matisse. But uh, Postel managed to get Matisse to, I'm not going to say quit, but I saw an interview where Matisse said he heard something in his eye snap, and he didn't want to get up from his knees. Antonio Orozco moved to 23-0 and after 10 rounds, unanimous decision win over Humberto Soto. Also, a lot of people forgot about this fight. In Cincinnati, Ohio, Adrian Broner stepped in to see if he could be a four-weight world champion, and yes, indeed, he now is. A 12th-round TKO victory over Alak Verdiev. So now Broner is a fourth Four weight world champion, so fantastic uh, personal achievement for him. Um, okay, it's time for our first guest. We have Mr. Oval McKenzie. Okay, born in Jamaica. Last weekend he was in Argentina. Today I'm guessing he's somewhere in Derby, but right now he's on our show. He's, of course, Mr. Oval McKenzie. Welcome to the show, Oval. Yes, brother, man. I'm in London, mate. I'm still in London. Are you in London? Yeah, ticking over a bit. I'm going to introduce some interview in London. I'm going to make Steve Barnes tomorrow. You meeting so, Steve tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to stay in London for a bit before I go off to Derby. I'm going to Derby in the weekend. I know you're somewhat of a gym rat these days. You haven't been back in the Peacock already, have you? 
I have been from Tuesday. I've been in the gym from Tuesday. Uh, yeah, Tuesday. I've been in the gym two days now. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Good to hear. Um, Oval. Obviously, I was one of the, the the many people who stayed up last Friday to watch the fight. Um, Victor Emilio Ramirez. I didn't know much about him before the fight, but um, I mean, I watched it. I thought you boxed very cleverly, and I've never seen you box very. You know, you seem to be more controlled than I've ever seen you. Um, did you think you won the fight at the end? I know I win it, brother. He told me twice I won it as well. I know I win the fight, and I was, that's why I was so a bit excited because he's telling me twice in my ears that I won it. He said, you won, mate. He told me I won it twice. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I saw that you said that he'd, he'd admitted that you'd won the fight. Twice, um, he told me. Was that in the ring? Yeah, after, yeah, after, yeah, after the, after the fight, after the, uh, at the end of the fight, they will come over in and hug up each other. They tell me there, and then hug the second time. They tell me again. They tell me twice when we hug up. This twice he told me. Um, a lot of people thought that you'd never get. Um, even if you won quite clearly, it would be hard to get the decision. What do you think of the draw? Do you think, do you think it was poorly judged, or do you think it was pretty? You know, it was because it was a, it was a closest fight. I mean, I gave it to you by two rounds personally. I but, think it was poorly judged. I think the referee, them maybe they were just maybe scared for their life. I don't know why something. I don't know, but I don't know, brother. But it was poorly judged, mate. I win it by far, mate. Yeah. Or boxing. Um. I mean, how do you feel now? I mean, you looked... I mean, obviously, you was happy when you got the shot. You seemed happy after the fight, to be honest. And you didn't look too... I mean, I don't want to say... You didn't look disappointed. You looked You looked no, happy with what you did. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is I just, I'm a happy guy because I, I just know in my heart that I beat him. That's why I was smiling about it. I'm happy. You know I do my best and I know I beat him. And I know they robbed me and give me a draw. And, and, and if you tell you the truth, a draw is better than... Better than then they said he won it. You know what I mean? So you know, in Argentina to get a draw is, is a perfect. Is, is a good. Is a good. Is a good achievement, mate. Yeah, definitely. So, and, and and at least we can get a rematch here back in back back home in England and maybe our next third one over in Germany or somewhere anywhere. You know, but just just to make it fair, you know. So I, I don't mind. Say we can get two more fights out of this. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because I heard Frank Warren was trying to appeal for a rematch. Yeah, he's trying his best. He's trying because you know the the world know I want it, brother. I ain't, I would lie to myself as well. I want it, make clear. Yeah, no, no, it was pretty clear for me. Um, mm. um, I mean, it's been eleven years since you last fought out of the UK, uh, outside of the UK. Was you a bit nervous going over there, or was you just completely? No. Uh, if tell you the truth, if you tell you the truth, you know what? A couple, like I'll be honest to you, I was alright because it, 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 it was two hours away from the hotel, and when we was going there, even the, the man who was driving the bus, he was lost because he never, he never went to this place before. It was like in the jungle, mate. It was far, brother. If I wasn't from if I wasn't from Jamaica, I would be shit myself, brother. I'm telling you straight. <laughs> when I go there, I loved it. I look on and I say, "Fuck, it's like Jamaica." <laughs> you know, I get love. It was outdoor and dog. You have dog. I run up and down and you have wild dog around the venue running up and down. It's like it was like Chilla Millina. Chilla Millina. You know when, people, brother? I can tell you, it was forty years ago. Forty wow. years on one day when they have that Chilla Chilla Millina. When they said the lion and the tiger and the, when them said the crocodile was what passing in passing over when everybody was fighting. You know, Mom and Ali and 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 Joe. I think it's Joe Fraser that was fighting in Africa. Yes, yes. And uh, it was the same way. It was uh, our one was 40 years and two days. It was October the, October the 1st, Chile Monday, and it was October the 2nd. I'm fighting. So it was something like that, brother. I think I, 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 I do a bit of history down there, man. History, I'm going down there and do a lot of upset, mate. I beat him. I win that fight clearly, mate. You know? <laughs> Clearly, dog, my brother them there, my brother them there, I have four guys come from Derby and my brother when I get in the ring and saw them, they were shitting themselves, they sit down there, like, you know, when the teachers, when when the misbehave at school, my teacher said, you sit down there, boys, and don't move, <laughs> I, see, I, see, I get in the ring and see them, so I, I go over to them and tell them, said, and said, we have a we have space in the bus to come along. And they was, you look like they was telling me, say, oh, leave me alone. Don't talk to me. <laughs> they, was, they, they, was, they was scared. 
And right afterward, we have a video where they're saying, oh, you British wonkers, wonkers. <laughs> He's cussing at them, man. It was, brother, it was horrible at some time, man. But I was all right. But I saw if my mate, them, they even go without telling me. They went up, they have, they did have taxi out the venue waiting for them for two and a half hours. They have to wait, have the taxi man waiting for them and pay the taxi man as well. You know, for waiting wow. for them. So it was, all right, I was a little... It was you know it was in to a forest mate. These people was live by themselves in into the jungle where where Ramiro come from. So I think the MP, you know, he if, it was, if the MP guy that saved us, brother, I ain't gonna lie to you. Because he was he was sponsoring he was sponsoring Ramirez and he have a lot of police there with armed armed police brother and police dogs and, and they have the machine guns and right. But it was hard it was like it was not like I was in Jamaica, don't keep the garden brother was I'm telling you. <laughs> it, was, it was something else, but I, like some people who never see stuff such in before they would have been scared, mate, I'm telling you. Yeah, because I know that um when Martin Murray fought over there, obviously against uh, Martinez yeah. when he was walking to the ring I think someone spat at him people were throwing bottles yeah there was and and the and, and only reason why this door happened to me brother I'm telling you it's only because of the politician he probably yeah. have it on a control a lot of police was there with guns and everything man loads of police and soldier was there with guns and um, police brother so that was that was, and they he's trying to look the vote so he never want any trouble to happen so they must have be of themselves brother that's why if if we if, if, if it wasn't for them, brother, we would have been string up and hang up alive, I think, mate. I'm telling you. You know, I ain't going back there, mate. They need to come to England and I'll show sure, sure them all treat people nice. You know, I'm telling you. I just want to say, um, there's a lot of people in boxing um, whose record doesn't suggest how good they are. I think that is you. That the, the, that that's you know that's the definition of of your record. To be honest, it doesn't show how good you well, are. But this is uh, this is with me, brother. I'm, uh, you know, record for me is not a problem. Like this is what people need to look at. You know, see a win is clear and fair, and they give me a jar. The same with my some of my previous fight, brother. You know, I take fight one day and and I win the fight, but they give it to the next opponent. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, these things like this don't bother me. And sometimes I know if I if sometimes I lost fight and the record we have, if I was fit and training, ready, that guy that opponent would beat me could have never beat me, man. I gotta take fight two days notice, you know. Sometimes I'm not training and and I, and I need the money, you know. I will never join him, man. People say, hey, are you in the community to say I'm a journey, man. I've never been a journey, man, in my life, man. Never. And because, you know, that, not because I had that record, I, I'm a journey. I'm not a journey. I'm not a I'm not at all. I always want to win fights. I, I always want to be a world champion. Yeah, no, nah, not at all. Um, what was I also going to say? Um... I know that you've done you done it you did a little bit of sparring in Cuba earlier this year. Yeah, yeah, over there, yeah, over there with him there. Yeah. Um, I know you've sparred you've sparred a lot of guys worldwide. Um, who's the toughest sort of guys you've sparred with, Ovil? Uh, toughest. Oh, oh. Well, that's why. Oh, I think this is Arthur Bettega, man. Arthur Bettega. But Arthur Bettega is from Canada. Arthur, is this Bater, Arthur Baterbiev? Yes. That's oh, the right. One. Yes, yes, yes. I'm telling you, he's a right firecracker, man. I'm t- <laughs> he hits. He's programmed to kill, man. <laughs> he's got hands of stone, this guy. He got, he programmed to kill. I like him, man. He's a, yes, he's the one. He's the hardest part I ever have, my brother, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, he's a big yeah, prospect man, he, for the he, future. He, me, yeah, big prospect for the future. I ain't gonna lie to you that man. You gotta look out, watch him, watch, look out for him, man. He's dangerous, man. Yes, um, and also, obviously, you know, you've got the, you've got the, um, a few losses on the record. I just want to ask one question: If there was one loss that you could avenge, which loss would it be? Who, who would you like to come back, rematch, and beat if you could? If it could be anyone that you've oh, got a blemish to tell you the Bellu man, I like that Bellu third Bellu fight. That would be a good fight. You know what I mean? It'd be a good fight in cruiserweight division. And and the next one and and, and even Enzel as well, man. I like. I want to pay. I want to. You know, I want to knock him. He stopped me. He's a good. You know that. You know that eleven. That second fight with Enzel is a good fight. But I like that fight. You know, I learned a lot from it, and he made me the person I am. But I'd like that. I'd like to revenge that as well, you know. Yeah. But, but Bellu will fight. I think Bellu will fight in front, my brother. Yeah. I know a lot of people would like to see me done that, and I know I can do it, brother. I know I can do it. Yeah. You know? 
Um, I know I can do it. Overall, I just want to get your what's your top if if you if you can uh, your top five pound for pound uh, in today's boxing. No, no, I never, brother. To be honest to you, I don't, I don't watch boxing. I, I don't study it like that. Don't think of, I, I, I'm not into it like that. To, you know, to the truth. yeah, no, that's no problem. There's a lot of boxers who who are fans of the sport and some who just do the sport. So that's fair yeah, enough. I am. Yeah, yeah, the thing is, brother, I do, because I know what's going on with the sports right now. It's politics, and it's not, it's not the same like before, like when Mark, when Agla and them one day used to fight and. And Mike Tyson, he's not the same, but he's just a business going on at the minute. So I don't, I'm not really a big fan of the boxing, brother. They kill it, the promoter, them killing the boxing because that's who can sell ticket and the pick and choose who they want to fire to. And he's just, not, he's not the same. He's not excited, you know. He's just, they're killing the sports, brother. It's not the same. It's just, I don't like it anymore. But I'll be honest, with you. before it's the nice back in the day. Man used to fight. Man used to just fight and never used to be who are who, who can sell who tickets and all that. Come on. It is a business these days. Uh, over, I'm going to pass you over to my partner on the show. He's got a couple of questions for you. All right, mate. Ayaz, come in, mate. Okay. Hello, Over. How are you doing first? No, I'm fine, mate. Good. Good. Okay. Good you. Yeah, I'm not too bad, actually. Okay. All right, bro. Okay. Um, how did it feel to be able to sh- uh, showcase your boxing and hold your own at a world level? Well, it is great, you know, it's great to put that performance at a time where I need it. And, and I always have, I always perform like that in the gym. I, I spar like that with people. I just, sometimes when my head, my head tip me and I, and I say, I want to end this run in a certain run, I want to beat myself and I want to prove something to myself. Say, I want to do it in this run. I want to, you know, some, but if I want to box, if I'm, if I want to box, I can box, but I can spar like that, you know, so I know I can do it. So. It's just good to do it a uh, big stage at that man. That's just everything is work. I don't, I don't everything has come out as natural. I think it's natural. I don't know, but I'm happy. Um, yeah, over uh, just um any sort of message for any of the supporters who stayed up on Friday, who came out to Argentina or who just follow you in general? Well, I just I, 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 I you know, I just need the fans to know it said you know, I go to go to Argentina and 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 and, and do the business and, and represent and and that's all I want to do. I want to rep- represent the country and as a sportsman. I'm a sportsman. I'm here to rep- represent, and I'm not a politician. I'm a sportsman. You know, and I'm here to represent the country, and that's all I want to do. Show people say I can, I can represent this country to the highest. But here, as I said, we come back to England. That we want to support. We need support. We have to get the support in. Yeah, uh, overall, I think you're a fantastic ambassador for the support. Um, uh, for the sport, sorry. Um, obviously, a lot of people um, do support you a lot more than you probably expected on the night with staying up to watch it. Um, overall, listen, I think that you, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. I think that you, um, you won the fight, and if there is a rematch, you get a proper training camp. You, you're gonna, you, you are gonna stop this guy. Do you know what I mean? You, you've got it, and uh, I wish you all the best, Oval. You, you done fantastic last week. You know, I know that your future's bright, and uh, it will go. You'll go on to big things. I'm sure of that. Cheers, brother. Thank you, mate. Respect. Oval, thank you for coming on the show. Take good care. Thank you, Oval. All right, mate. Cheers, mate. No worries. Safe. We're now at the preview part of the show where we talk about the forthcoming uh, weekend of boxing. We're going to start with um, the English card, of course. Terry Flanagan um, making his first defence of his WBO World Lightweight title against Diego Magdaleno. Um, Ayaz, what are your thoughts on that fight? I think, I think it's a good fight. It's his first defence. I want to see how this fight, how it fight, how this fight sorry, goes. Yeah, um, obviously Terry Flanagan, he won his world title in strange fashion, to say the least. Um, I think this is going to be a very good fight. Uh, Obviously, Terry Flanagan unbeaten in 28 fights. Diego Magdaleno, 28-1 and record. Um, Liam Smith, I'm very, very pleased about this. Can Liam Smith be the first out of all the Smith brothers to capture a world title? Um, He's fighting John Thompson. Uh, Liam Smith, obviously, 20 wins, zero losses, and the one draw. He fights 
for the vacant WBO World Super Welterweight title, also known as the light middleweight title. He fights John Thompson with a record of 17-1. and one. I really hope that Liam Smith can do this because we've seen the Smith brothers in world title fights. Well, I say we've seen the Smith brothers in world title fights, but we've seen Paul Smith uh, I think he's had three shots at the title now. He's come up short each time. But hopefully Liam can do it because Liam's a fantastic fighter. Obviously, he's the only one of the Smith brothers to be signed with Frank Warren, whereas Paul, um, Callum, and of course Stephen are with Eddie Hearn. How fantastic would it be for Liam Smith to capture a world title on Saturday night, Ayers? I think it would be amazing if Liam Smith wins it. Obviously, his brothers, uh, for example, Paul Smith, he's had two fights against Arthur Abram, lost them both on points, and he had he went one on he had he had a fight with Andre Wood, and obviously he lost to Andre Wood. And to be honest, is Liam Smith, if Liam Smith wins this, it'll be a mir- it'll be a miracle for the Smith family. Yeah, um, I think I think I think he's going to win. I believe he can win, and hopefully he can do it all on the night. Moving down that card, we've got Luke Blackledge. Uh, 19 wins, two losses and two draws. He fights Lee Markham. Uh, a lot of people know Lee Markham for his massive, well, it was a, it was a, it was a dog fight to be honest against Frank Bullioni earlier this year. Obviously, they was going to have a rematch, and Frank Bullioni managed to fight for a world title. So uh, Lee Markham would be very confident going into this. Uh, this is also for the Commonwealth Super Middleweight Title. Down the card, we've got Tom Stalker. Tom Stalker fights Craig Evans. That's for the vacant WBO European lightweight title. Uh, moving down the card, Jack Catterall. He's attempting to move to 13-0. and 0. He fights a guy with the same record as him, 12-0, and 0, who is also trying to get to 13-0. and 0, So that should be an interesting contest. Um, all the best to Jack Catterall. Again, big fans of him on the Box Hard podcast. Also, there's a there's a Matchroom Fight Pass show on Saturday as well. They've sort of gone under the radar, not had much exposure, but we will be speaking to one person who's fighting on that bill next week. I'm not going to say any names as of yet. John Ryder fights. He tops that bill. He fights against Adam Jones. Uh, John Ryder, 20 wins, 2 losses, fights Adam Jones, 5 wins, 10 losses, and 4 draws. Um, also, on that card... Johnny Coyle, he fights AJ Fazy. Um, that's for the vacant WBC Youth Intercontinental Super Lightweight title. Said all that without taking a breath. Ben Hall is on the card against Aston Jolly. Uh, Reese Belletti gets out again. Adam Salmon gets out again. Mickey O'Rourke's on the card. Craig Richards. Ted Cheeseman, obviously we saw his debut recently. Ted Cheeseman's back on the card. Um trying to see if he can get his second victory in two. Jake Ball's on the card, and also Isaac Chamberlain fights on the card as well. Um, Very big prospect for the future, Isaac Chamberlain. He fights a guy who has had somewhere around 14 times as many fights as himself, so that should be Interesting. Also, another fight that's gone underneath the radar in Wales this weekend. Um, Enzo Macronelli fights Jiri Zvaksina. Again, I'm not too sure about the pronunciation. Uh, Enzo Mac, with his record these days, 39 and 7, fights Jiri Zvaksina. 12 wins and 16 losses. Um, yeah, that's gone under the radar. That card. Um, what do you think? What do you think Enzo Macronelli, Enzo Mac has left Ayers these days? Uh, I reckon he's got a couple of fights left in him. Isn't there rumour he's meant to fight Roy Jones Jr.? Yes, that's um, that's a big piece of news. Um, not too sure. Um, I'm not too sure how much you know how solid that is. But uh, yeah, there's been I've heard little whispers about that fight, but um, we'll see what happens because obviously I think Roy Jones has got two. Uh, fight scheduled at the moment on box rec when I last checked. So I don't know when that's going to be. And obviously Enzo Macronelli's out this Saturday. Also uh, moving over to um, Massachusetts, USA. 
Um, Gary Spike O'Sullivan fights David Toribio. Again, we're not going to go into detail on that. Uh, Gary's going to be on the show later to talk to us all about that and much more. Stephen Orman fights on the card. He fights Michael Clark, which should be a good contest too. Um, I'm not sure if this is if we're going to be able to get this on UK television, but it will be cracking if we can. And also, <clears throat> there's a very strange card in Venezuela. Um, get a load of this. Jorge Linares, who obviously um, stopped our man um, Kevin Mitchell recently on the... What card was that on, Ayaz? What was the name of that card? Rule Britannia. Kel Brook, Frankie Gavin. Yes, I remember that. Yes. Jorge Linares defends his WBC world lightweight title against Ivan Carno. Uh, Jorge Linares 39 and 3 against Ivan Carno 23 6. 23 and 6 with two draws. I said it was a crazy card. Down that bill, Sergei Kamitsky, who a lot of people will remember, stopped Frank Bullioni. Um, he also stopped Adam Etches, of course. He fights Alfonso Blanco, who is unbeaten in 11 contests. Um, Sergei Kamitsky, 30 wins, 11 losses and 3 draws. He fights Alfonso Blanco, 11 and oh, um, that should be an interesting fight. Sergei Kamitsky really can crack. And if he lands, it could be early doors for Alfonso Blanco. Also, again, the third strange fight of this bill and the last strange fight of this bill, the last one we're going to mention. Alexander Ustinov, uh, 31 and 1, fights Morris Harris, 26, 19 and three draws. Um, I'm not saying these are the best fights in the world, but a very strange card. Um, I know that Linares is from Venezuela, so that's fine. But very, very strange to see Kamitsky on the card and Ustinov. Um, anything to add on that card, Ayaz? All I want to see is the fights just happen. I want to see uh, one thing I would love to see is Linares fight uh, Kevin Mitchell again in a rematch. Yeah, it'd be great to see a rematch. Um the last thing I wanted to add, there was a piece of news this week. Um, Ayaz, do you want to tell us about the news that, that we uh, we read upon this week? Mar is it Martin Murray uh, fighting Arthur Abraham? Martin Murray fighting Arthur Abraham, that's it. Um, there was a lot of rumours that this could take place when Martin Murray signed for Matchroom, but... Um, I wasn't sure if it was going to happen, but I'm pleased it has happened. Obviously, Paul Smith has fought twice for a world title against Arthur Abraham. Arthur Abraham has also fought Carl Froch. So he's fought, he's fought, they've, he's had quite a lot of business with Eddie Hearn's fighters. And hopefully this time, um, Martin Murray can take his belt off him. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would love to see. Martin Murray, obviously, is a very tough fighter. He took on the likes of Golovkin and took Golovkin 11th round. And obviously, Martin Murray, for moving up to uh, super middleweight, yeah, it's a very big step up, right? And Arthur Abraham's a very good fighter. So we'd like to see how, we, how, we have, how, how they both collide. Martin Murray, of course. Um, I don't think he's been managed and looked after, um, perhaps, as good as he could have been. Um, he's been in a lot of fights, um, perhaps the wrong fight at the wrong time. Um, you know, he's been in there with, yeah, like you said, Golovkin, Martinez, and many other names, many other big names. And he is, a lot of people won't agree with me, but he really is one of our best fighters from Britain. He really is one of the best fighters we've got. And I hope he can do it because he deserves to. He's a very, very nice man, a uh, genuine good guy for the sport, really nice guy. So uh, best of luck with that, Martin. OK, it's time for our second guest, Mr. Gary Spike O'Sullivan. Yeah, Hello, yeah, Spike, and welcome to the show. You fight Saturday the 10th in Lowell Memorial Auditorium, Massachusetts. Yep. Uh, your opponent pulled out. Uh, you've got the new opponent, uh, David Toribio. Do you know much about the guy? Yeah, I've seen him work through clips on YouTube. Yeah, he looks like he can punch a bit. Um, but he comes and uh, they will take him out. Um, I think you've just got the one common opponent. Um, you both faced the same guy in Melvin Betancourt. Yeah, I know that, yeah. Uh, he knocked him out in eight, but he knocked him out in two. That's right, that's right. Uh, you and this guy both got 21 wins, 14 inside the distance. Uh, 
He's four yeah. years. He's four years your senior, but um, he's he's a lot more experienced than some people may think. He's been in there with the likes of Sergio Martinez, um, James Kirkland, M- Marco Antonio Rubio. Um, is there any? I mean, are you confident that you're going to get your fifth stoppage in a row? Um, I, I won't go in there looking for a stoppage, but I think uh, when I land shots, uh, I tend to take them out. But uh, I'm looking to get a few rounds under my belt and working on a few things that I've been trying on the gym, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, no, I know you don't you don't really go into fights looking for the knockout, but you always seem to get it most of the time. Um, where yeah. do you like fighting most, Spike? Do you like fighting Ireland, England, or, or the States, and why? Um, I, I actually really enjoy love fighting all of them. Um, you know, um, I like fighting the States. That's my seventh fight now in the States. I love fighting in the UK. Um, I like fighting at home in Ireland. I just love fighting. So I uh, put on a show for the fans and uh, entertain the people. Yeah. Um, Okay, uh, there's three fights soon to be happening in your division. Um, I wanted to get your predictions on these fights. Um, we don't see, we, we perhaps don't see as many unification fights as we should do in boxing, but we've got one in your division, uh, Golovkin versus Lemieux. Who do you see yeah. winning this fight, Spike? I think Golovkin will win it. I think Golovkin will win it. Um, Lemieux is a wild and Golovkin is a... You know, more cautious than me. He's very powerful, and I think he's nothing else. Okay, um, has Frank Bullioni come over to support you as well? He's actually sitting right beside me. Say that again, sorry? He just, he just arrived. Oh, he's just yeah, arrived? He's, he's just sitting right beside me here, yeah. He just, uh, he just arrived off the plane. We just clicked him from the airport. Brilliant. I'm in the car here, you'll have to excuse all the noise. That's Packy Collins up the front shouting and roaring <laughs> at the uh, co pilot of the, of, the, of the car. The, the handbrake had to catch him fire. And uh, I've got Steve Armand here in the car as well. And Colin <laughs> Thomas, my, my sponsor. <laughs> there you go, man. Excellent. <laughs> Obviously, you was, um, you was there for Bullioni uh, in his fight, which he come yeah. up. I don't want to say... Uh, I don't want to say come up short, but um, it was a close fight. But um, wow, has he got some some cojones, as they say. Oh, yeah. Just just, just you're saying, I'm looking at Fox News and it says on the front of the magazine, so it's all the steel. And then that sums it up. And your fight on yeah. Saturday, Spike, will it be televised? Uh, it will be televised, yeah, on uh, NBC. NBC. Have you fought yeah, on right, have you fought on Spike yet? Um, I don't think I fought in the break, no. Because yeah. we all want to see, not. we all want to see Spike yeah, on Spike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too. <laughs> another, another, another fight, um, also I believe to be confirmed now is Danny Jacobs, Daniel Jacobs against Peter Quillin. Um, yeah. Who you got in that fight, Spike? It'll be an interesting one, that one. It's hard to call, very, very hard to call it. I look forward to watching that one. Yeah. It's going to be a good fight, good Two good, very good boxers. Yeah. In the and a close friend of yours now, uh, Billy Joe Saunders against Countryman Andy Lee. I thought I have to leave this best till last. Who have you got in that fight? <laughs> um, that's another one. I, uh, it's, I think it's a 50-50 fight. I can see Billy Joe Saunders uh, maybe taking the early rounds because Andy Lee is kind of stark slow. You know, I think it could be like even like some cagey like Jim Gale and Andre Larell, two good like a uh, boxer so pause uh, but uh, and nearly could um, knock him out later on at Billy Joe Tires like he did against Eubank um, uh, it's, it's a hard one to call I, would, I won't be going I like to do a bet but this one I won't be putting the bet on because uh, I just can't go in it <laughs> it's very close um, there's a lot of talk I thought uh, we can't we can't talk to you without having to mention this guy's name there's a lot of talk about potential bout on the December 12th card against Chris Eubank Jr also known as English Jr you've probably got a few other names yeah. for him as well <laughs> what, yeah, are yeah, yeah. What, are the, <laughs> what are the chances of this fight happening I think they're very, very strong now. Uh, it's a very, very, very close to doing a deal, and uh, you know, uh, it'll be announced pretty soon. I think. Because obviously, we get a lot of um, you know 
fighters talking back and forth on Twitter and it never really materialises to anything. But you reckon this fight is something that will will happen? Um, I don't know if it'll actually really and truly happen if you get in the ring, but um, I think the contracts will be signed, yeah. I think it'll be announced and it'll probably be, you know, it'll be out there that the fight's going to happen, but whether it'll turn up on the night, I don't know. Okay, and... Um... Spike, um, you're a f- you're a fan of the sport as well as a competitor in the in the sport. Um, Absolutely. What's your top at the moment? Top five pound for pound. Oh my god! So I know that this is I know this is a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, well, Any particular order? Still asking, still asking what the up there is about, you know. Um, Oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. I can't pick it up. I can't do it. Stephen Armand, I think he's uh, the way that people haven't heard much about, but I think he's going to show a lot of potential to people in the near future. They got starting to be more for his boxing now. And, uh, he's an unbelievable fighter. He's maybe beaten twice. He's beaten by um, Terry Flanagan and Paul Appleby, but both his grandparents played around those fights. And, uh, you know, uh, I think when he. Okay, um, I've got my partner on the call Mate. finally. Um, he's got a couple of questions for you. Ayaz, do you want to come in? Yep. Uh, yep. Thank you. Thank you, Joey. Uh, hello, Spike. How are you doing? Very good yourself. I'm not too bad, actually. Um, Spike, um, the thing I want to ask you is, if this ha- fight happens between you and Chris Uban Jr., what round do you see this happening? What round do you see this go? Um, what round do I see it going, is it? Yes. Um, I think I'll definitely knock about any of one 100%. Uh, I, I don't know what round, but uh, yeah. he won't see the final bell. Okay, yeah. No, um, I can't. Would you consider taking on the likes of Gennady Golovkin in the future? Absolutely. I'd love it. I'd relish that opportunity. The, um, the dream is going to be um, ranked as the number one middleweight on the planet, and uh, I think he's a man to go through. Yes, yeah, Spike, right, listen, right. uh, thank you very, very much for speaking to us so close to your fight. Um, best of luck Saturday. No doubt you'll probably get your fifth knockout in a row. And uh, hopefully we can speak to you sometime after the fight. Yeah, what else, though? So it'd be great to speak to you again. And yeah, thanks for having me on. Say, hello, you, to the gu- say hello to the guys for us. Thank you very much, Spike. Oh, good indeed. Sure, sorry. God bless. Okay, everybody, I think that concludes our show. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you listened last week. I hope you're back this week because you listened last week. Please retweet, please follow, please share, please tell your friends to tell their friends. We'll be back next week with another big guest. Um, So please tune in. There'll be a guest every single show. So um, please, if you if this is the first time you've listened to the podcast, please recommend it to your friends and please come back next week. Thank you very much.